Welcome back, shop rats. It's another Talk About It Tuesday, and today we're going to talk about handing down our collector cars to the next generation. It's a fun topic. It's an interesting topic, and maybe not always a popular topic, but it's probably worth talking about. I might. This is my cars shop. This past year, there was definitely a few high dollar cars that were passed down from father to son and those family members chose not to keep those things and they were sold at auction for big money. Don't know that I necessarily want to call out specifically what cars I'm talking about, doesn't matter, but if you've been paying attention, you know what I'm talking about. It's funny because the comments that people make about people selling these high-profile inherited cars is more revealing about the commenter than it is about the motives behind the people that sold them. Um, Usually the things that I see hurled the most are, they're just greedy, they're just greedy, they're just greedy. Well, maybe they are, or maybe their life circumstance isn't such that they can really handle doing justice to a car that's valued at a million or more dollars because they're trying to survive on a $20,000 or $30,000 a year income and put a couple kids through college and, well, I think you get the picture. So I don't know what people's motives are. I'm not that smart. But I do want to talk about what it's like to have a bunch of collector cars and think about handing those down to the next generation. I do stay up on the current market value of the vehicles that I own and I do know about what they're worth even though some of you think, not some of you, but some people that visit the channel um, think that the stuff I have is worthless garbage. I know better than that. I've been in this hobby for a long time and I don't expect top dollar for stuff but I do know what vehicles tend to be worth in the condition that they are. Whether or not you've hand fabricated parts or not doesn't really matter. Anyway, that's not the subject of this. But I've talked to my son a lot and I've talked to my daughter a little, uh, mostly my son because he's into all of this stuff. What vehicles does he want and which ones does he not want and the direction um, that I need to consider moving forward as I'm aging and the sands in my hourglass are running down. One thing I've been very conscious of is not wanting to saddle my kids with a bunch of cars that they don't want. Now Joe's been pretty specific about which ones in the collection that he wants. I've definitely had some thoughts about which one or ones I would like my daughter and son-in-law to have. But again, it's real that I don't want to saddle my kids or my grandkids with cars that they want nothing to do with and that they can't afford and have no place to keep and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, let's face it, it's real. I've made this comment several times on my long form videos that I don't think people are very far thinking. They tend to only live in the world as it exists today and do make the assumption that the world a hundred years from now is going to be the same as far as the collector hobby and 200 years and 300 years and 500 years and a thousand years down the road uh, nothing is going to be different and I don't buy that I think most of this stuff that we so highly value and treasure a big chunk of it is eventually going to just end up in the junk pile because nobody wants it and it has no intrinsic value. Yes, there will always be, I think, uh, some museum pieces, but overall the hundreds and or hundreds of thousands or maybe even millions of collector cars that exist, especially in the United States, um, eventually there's just not going to be a group of people that want them because they can't relate to them. I mean, let's face it that, you know, have, me having grown up in the 70s, um, Muscle cars were definitely a thing through my childhood and my teen years, big to me when I was in high school, uh, and, and then, of course, big throughout my life. And I just don't see the next generation, uh, 
as enthused because they didn't grow up with them as far as seeing them out every day and there being a huge popularity. Like my kids grew up with me having them and there I'm sure is some nostalgia regarding that, but what about their kids and their kids' kids and their kids' kids? I just don't see that continuing on and eventually that's, there's going to be a loss of interest. They see that happening to a large degree with antique cars. Uh, my grandfather's generation that were really into this stuff and my dad's generation was into it some, eh, maybe quite a bit, but, but not as much as my grandfather's generation. Uh, there is still an interest and there's still a group of people that have them, but that is going to continue to become a smaller and smaller segment of society and the interest in it and the knowledge of it is eventually going to really become very, very minimal. And we're seeing those antique car values definitely coming down as a result. Some people would argue with me and say, oh, that's never going to happen. I just don't see my great grandkids wanting to spend 80000 or or 100000 dollars on a 70 Challenger or not, not on mine. Mine's not worth anywhere near that, but um, that kind of thing. They just don't have anything to can relate to except maybe that grandpa had one and or great grandpa had one and I remember when I was little getting to go ripping around in it. Um, I don't know. And I, I just don't see that happening. So as, as we consider the future, and I know we have to live in the world that we're in right now and not worry about what's going to be a thousand years from now, but I still think it bears some looking at um, the one particular vehicle that I was referring to earlier. Um, the father was very adamant that uh, this car was to be handed down to the next generation and it was not to be sold. I, I think that's very unfair because I think people of our generation and, and the older generations are willing to make great sacrifices and know how to really cut corners because of the skills we have to save money um, because we're so passionate about this. Um, it is such a huge part of our lives. But it's not necessarily going to be the case for the next generation and the generation after that and further on down the road. And I think it's unfair to kind of saddle them with something and then put a demand on them that they're going to feel really, really guilty about um, if they go, Dad, I'm sorry, but I, I, I don't necessarily want this thing. I can't afford this thing. And I don't even know what to do with this thing. As I said, my son and I have had some pretty open conversation about this and always with the provision from my side of, you know, if you get this stuff from me and you have to sell it, I understand that. Uh, if you get this stuff and you don't have to sell it but you don't want it, maybe there's another family member that might want it. Or maybe you get this stuff and you want it but can't afford it. Or, you know, do what you got to do. I don't want it to become the keeper of the archives and some huge family museum of crap that nobody really wants, but they feel obligated to maintain and they feel guilty about even considering getting rid of. And likewise, my son has been pretty realistic. He's listed off what vehicles he wants, but he has always said, Dad, if you need to sell this stuff, I do understand that. Don't feel obligated to hang on to it just so you can hand it down to me. And I do greatly respect that. I have no intention at this point of selling the core of my collection, but it is definitely um, good to know that I don't have to feel obligated to keep this stuff because he really, really wants it. Um, you know, like my GTS, for example, um, earlier on he didn't express any interest in the car, but as time has gone on and he has aged, um, the car has come to mean more to him and he remembers working on it from the time he was very young, uh, all through his teen years working on it with me. He and, his, he and my nephew worked on it. Um, so there's some sentimental things there with that car. Uh, now, if somebody was to offer me big stupid money for that car, would I go, no, I'm not selling it because I want to hand that down to my son? No. But it would definitely be a factor in the decision um, 
uh, as to whether or not I kept the car. In an ideal world, I think it would be great to uh, be able to put all of this stuff into some kind of trust with the finances in place for it to be taken care of to ease that burden on the future generations. But I really think that um, more than is what more than what is talked about, it's not popular narrative. I guess is what I'm trying to say that. Um, I think the financial condition of our generation is not anywhere near as good overall as the boomer generation. I think most of us are barely eking by as it is and just don't have big resources to be able to put into some kind of trust like that um, to take care of that. If you do, by all means, I think it's worth considering. But I would encourage you to have those conversations if you plan on handing your stuff down to your kids or your nephew or niece or uh, other relatives. Have an open, honest conversation about how they feel about it and encourage them to be honest with you, not just placate you with, of course I want that, Dad, of course I want that, when inside they're going, what the heck am I going to do with that? Well, that's kind of it today. It's not necessarily a very conclusive topic, but I think it was definitely worth talking about, and I'll probably circle back around to it yet. My thoughts are a bit jumbled on this one, but I thought I would just spitball this out there and get some feedback from you and see what your thoughts are, and we'll circle back around to this one again in the future. That'll do it.